Hi, um, can, hey. you, can you promote me? Yeah, um, it's acting weird. Okay. I don't think any of us have the um, link. It's on the town website. Um, yeah. So I was just checking it out to make sure it was the right one. Yeah. All right, I'm going to send an email to everyone. Letting me make you co-host. That's weird. Well, can you make me so we can I can be seen? Hmm. And how many people are joining? Can you tell that? I can see there are three. It's, uh, it's Bennett, you, and I. So, um... well, if you click on their names on the list of attendants, change to panelist. There we how go. About that? Hey guys, I can hear you now. I was having issues. Um, you know. So Henry, you and Bennett are both panelists now. Okay. It sounds like Bennett may have dropped out. Bennett's there. He's muted though. Okay. And there's somebody else. So. Uh, that, now you should be able to hear me, right? Yeah. Julian's there. Can you approach? Yeah. See if you can make me co-host now. OK. There it is. OK. OK, great. Oh, so I'll keep track of participants and uh, All right. can add people in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully we'll get a quorum. Uh, Shoshana is going to come to the meeting, but not this. Yeah. You no, know, uh, yeah, okay. Hmm. Well, hopefully, she'll be, you'll have enough for a quorum to vote. Yeah. Just need one more. Does anyone have Britt's phone number? She's the only person on the committee whose phone number I don't have. I may have it from the, let me see. I may have it from the Perry Maple celebration. I do think. If you can. Yeah. Uh, can you text her and find out she's coming? She didn't come yesterday and didn't let me know. I'm calling her right now. I found out. Oh, you have? OK. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'll check in with Sarah also. Get your car back, Julian. You're muted. We are being recorded. So. Oh, okay. Never mind. You're muted, though, Julian. But don't tell me. Oh, maybe he's talking to Britt. Uh, I just left a message for Britt. Um, and uh, she did not pick up. I said, come to the meeting if you can. Okay. Great. Uh, and I just texted Sarah, so we'll see. 
All righty. Be right back. The snow has been really wet and heavy today, which had a lot of my bushes and trees and stuff just leaning all over. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all melted and fallen off the trees now. Yeah. yeah. You know, I went out early this morning and just shook it off a lot of the lower branches. Yeah. So I just got a text back from Britt. Um, currently, she's not able to make the meeting because she's in Boston with her mom. Okay. I believe her mom is having some health issues, so that's why she's out there. Uh, okay. If we don't get a quorum, do we just reschedule? Um, Good question. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can hold a tree hearing, I guess, without a recommendation, um, official recommendation. From the committee, we make individual recommendations. You can make you can make individual recommendations, I guess. I right, don't uh, know. How how press how pressing is is this, uh, Alan? Just in terms of the the overall project. Um, I you know it's if we have to push it back a month, then I don't think that's going to impact the project. Um, Got it. It's just to get reposted and everything all over again. So, um, was it just the only person from the committee who, who was who was there yesterday who isn't here today? Is Sarah? Is that right? Is there anybody yep. else? Yep. Uh, she didn't. You know, people don't tell me what they're doing. It's hard to know if we're going to get a quorum. So, um, yeah. Um, Alan, there's no tree hearing about the birch trees in front of the. Town hall? Correct. It's not a public, it's not in the public way. We discussed the tree removal at the, at 
one of the meetings of the shade tree committee. Well, um, you brought it up. I, we didn't discuss it. I, yeah. you know, I'm opposed to the removal of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I can do about that, but. Uh, yeah, well, I can, we can, if the committee wants to meet and on the location and look at the tree, I'm more than happy to yeah. reach the committee there and, um, you know, look at it. I think if you walk around the back side of the tree and see where the leader that broke out about three years ago, um, you'll see the two remaining leaders are going to fail at the same spot. So it's a birch tree. Um, it's a clump birch and it's pretty much kind of what happens to them when they're they're grown from a single stem, you know, multiple stems coming from one, yeah. one but, connection point at the base. So. Won't it keep coppicing and sending out new stems, or it doesn't suck it out at all from the from that one? Um, yeah, we are actually. I was actually talking with um, our designer yesterday about it, and we're trying to come up with some species for planting along there. So, okay, but I'd be happy to meet the committee there. We can we can discuss it at the committee meeting. Um, and is it possible to leave it until it fails and it's not going to damage the building or anything? We don't like to leave trees to fail in, in high public traffic areas like that. So if someone's car can be parked there. It could be a day like today where you have a heavy wet snow and the tree falls and hits the car. God forbid, hits a person. So once once you identify a tree that has potential to fail like that, you know, yeah, under relatively normal weather conditions, um, you know, you've need to take action um so i have left the tree because i felt that it had some time left to it um and again i still feel like it has some time left to it um, but not a lot okay i'll put it on the agenda we can see if the committee wants to do anything else but you kind of answered my questions well um should we Reschedule this meeting. Well, we have four participants, and they're all part either the tree warden or part of the committee. We don't have any public right. comment at the moment. Um, I'm happy to continue. We, you know, until five thirty. Um, if uh, I mean, I can open the hearing, um, and we can discuss it. I guess that's what we should do. The hearing's okay. posted, so we should just continue. Okay. Um, so we'll start, and if someone comes in and joins us, then um, all the better. So uh, in accordance with Master and Law, Chapter 87, Section 3, under Shade Trees, the tree warden is holding a public hearing on today, Tuesday, March 14th, 2023, at 5 p.m., in a virtual meeting. Um, to review the proposed removal of a, nor a 22 inch DBH Nori maple uh, in front of 1162 North Pleasant Street um, for the town to make sidewalk and bus stop improvements. Um, this, this meeting is being recorded um, and will be available on after Friday for uh, review. Um, so since everybody was there that's on the meeting right now, <laughs> um, the town is, is proposing to redo or to create a new multi-use path that's going to go from Meadow Street in front of the Black Walnuts in um, along North Pleasant Street um, down to roughly um, the house number. Just past uh, 1146 North Pleasant Street where the project will terminate for the time being. Um, so the goal is to remove most of the existing four foot wide sidewalk that runs parallel to the property line uh, of the town in the houses along North Pleasant Street there. Um, and 
move it out closer to the road, um, make it eight feet wide, so it would be considered a multi-use path for bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, and then also to move the bus stop further south on North Pleasant Street on the same side. Um, currently, it is uh, in front of 1162, which is where the Nori Maple is that we're proposing to remove. Uh, it would be moved down to in front of 1156 North Pleasant Street um, for the new bus stop. Uh, the reason why the tree needs to be removed is because the grade changes that need to take place in the area to make the sidewalk is pretty significant and happens right up to the, you know, the trunk of the tree. So over half of the roots of the tree would be smothered in, in uh, new fill and sidewalk. Um, the tree has been pruned um, pretty aggressively due to the power lines that are there, so it's it's a little lopsided. It does have some fine tip die back throughout the tree, normal dead wood other than that, um, but mostly it's the fine tip die back right now that looks more recent um, than the standard sort of one or two, three inch diameter wood that's been dead for a while um, in the tree. Um, let's see, other trees um, will be impacted by this project, but the root zone impact is going to be minimal. Uh, any of the newer planted trees that we planted a number of years ago uh, will be moved um, and replanted on pretty much in the same location um, for the project. I think that covers why the tree is being removed. Um, does anybody have any questions? No. Nope. Okay. Not after yesterday. <clears throat> um, trying to think if there were some questions that were asked during the site visit that I couldn't answer at the time. There seem to be a lot of questions about the actual project yeah. versus the tree. Um, yeah. How is the tree's health overall? Yeah, it's it's uh, like a lot of our maples right now. It is struggling. The drought has been tough on most of our maples, even Norway maples. Um, I think that you know the excessive pruning because it was planted close to the power lines. You know, it hasn't hasn't really been able to grow over top of the power lines yet. So essentially, as you saw, half of the tree has been pruned to keep it away from the power lines. Um, so It's also soil, shaded by the bigger trees. Shaded by the new trees and has pretty serious soil compaction from the fact that the bus stop is there and people stand on the roots. Um, so. Um, This is 521, so. I have comments. I don't okay. have questions. Um, and I have no problem with this tree being removed. I think you've done a good job of designing it to avoid tree loss. However, it's hard to, um, to see this happen without knowing what's going to happen with the rest of the bike path. Hmm. So if they're going to continue that bike path all the way down, you know, how many trees are we going to lose in the whole project, you know, then, uh, you know, it seems silly to do just this little piece of it, right, in by itself, and then they don't do any more, but, um, yeah, that's, that's my only concern. I'd rather see whole projects designed, we see what the losses are, and then we can say this is more than we're willing to accept or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I haven't even, you know, I haven't seen the whole layout of the project yet. I mean, I know I've known about the project. They've been discussing it for a number of years. Um, yeah. The, um, you know, if they want to make it eight feet wide all the way down, there will be some tree impact. Um, it actually may not be as bad. There are a couple of trees there that are significant. Um, but I think they're going to. I think one of the plans called for them to go down North Pleasant Street and then jump to the other side of the street again um, at some point uh, to 
but I'm not sure if that's still in the plan or not. I, I haven't seen the whole, I don't even know if they have a whole design, but they might. Um, I mean, it's needed. I don't deny that getting people, getting bikes and people off of the sidewalk, out of the road there um, is a good thing. It's a heavily traveled road um, and making it more, making people feel safe by cycling on a multi-use path is, is a good thing. And Sarah, I think is gonna join in a couple minutes. So okay. we can have at least official meeting and vote. She lost track of time, so. It's an easy thing to do on a snow day with kids. Yeah. Bennett, did you lose power today? Did not. You did not? Oh. We yeah. have, we've never lost, I've lived in this house for, we've never had a significant power loss in 14 years. <laughs> wow, that's good. It's crazy, yeah. Did a lot of town lose power? I know my grandparents did. Yeah, Bay Road, sections of Bay Road lost power. Um, that's the only, and uh, maybe on West Pomeroy, a big, a pole fell over there. I don't know if there was a tree involved. I didn't see a tree involved, but a pole was knocked over. Um, so I don't know if they lost power or not. We had some flickering lights, that was it. So the Did smoke... you guys get a lot of tree issues around town or mostly snow? Not really. It was, um, I mean, we did have an ash tree split out. It was a co dominant stem ash on Rambling Road. Um, it fell parallel to the road, split in half. Um, so we just had to chip up the brush and stuff, get it out of the road. Um, yeah. And then branches kind of scattered around. Nothing major. Yeah. Well, it's nothing major in the way of snow. I mean, the ground is hardly white. Yeah, yeah, it, but it was it like was heavy working. wet snow. It was um, yeah, but it's not sticking. It yeah. keeps melting. So yeah, yeah. It, most of the calls came in between like six thirty and like eight thirty yeah. <laughs> this morning. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then it's just, they stopped coming in. Well, I don't know how long to wait? Oh, she's here. Hold on. Uh, where's perfect? That? There we go. So I will. Okay. Good. I shall be in in a second. Hey. Hello. Hi, sir. Sorry, I was late. I lost track of time. Yeah, it's all right. no, no, no. So we've pretty much done the discussion, everything, unless you have more to say. Um, we were just about to end the meeting when you joined. So now we have a quorum. So do you need to hear any more of the, the details? I don't think so. I feel pretty comfortable with what we saw at the site visit yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the true hearing at the moment for the moment and allow the committee to open up their meeting to vote. Um, and then you can close that and um, present your motion. <laughs> okay. So at uh, 526, I will temporarily close the hearing so that the public safety committee can have their meeting. Uh, to vote on the tree. Go ahead. So we, we need a motion. Somebody want to present one? I don't know sure. how these things go. Go for it, Julian. Look <laughs> at you. I was about um, to make up something. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we approve the uh, removal of the one Norway Maple at this location in an effort to create a multi-use uh, bike path and request that the town uh, leave and improve planting spaces in the vicinity. I, I would just add that um, 
all uh, best practices be used to protect the trees to remain, the existing roots um, of the trees to remain during construction. Um, that was, uh, I think, that was the selling point for me, was that doing this multi-use path is going to actually be better for the rest of the trees um, than if we were to maintain the sidewalk in its existing configuration. So just that little caveat of uh, best practices for protecting the, the trees um, that are staying. I'm good with that. Can we put that in as like a friendly amendment or whatever they call it? Yeah. Alan, are you writing it down or you want us to take notes on this? No, if you, if, if you could write that up and um, okay. it'll need to be just submitted, you know, kind of at the end. Um, Secretary official, Bennett? Official letter. Yeah, I, I thought about it halfway through Julian talking, so I didn't do a thing about it, so. I can reword it again. I have, I ha I have notes open, go for it. Okay, I move to um, recommend that the town of Amherst remove the one Norway maple at the specified location in an effort to create a multi-use path and in that effort also create um, and retain planting area as well as hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're doing good. I'm, I'm fast, but I'm not that fast. <laughs> uh, so uh, I stopped at creating a multi-use path. Well, well, uh, well, preserving areas for planting new trees and protecting other existing trees in the area, including their root zone, using best practices. Common house? Uh, Sarah, does that meet with your, does that include enough language for you about best practices and root zones? Yeah, I think so. Just a, a note about protecting the, the root zones of the existing trees during construction. So as long as that's in there, that's that's all that I was um, wanted to add. All right, all in favor? It's unanimous. Um, we can go back to Alan. Uh, Bennett, why don't you send that out to the committee and to Alan too, please. Okay. Thanks. All right, thank you. Um, so I will reopen the, the tree hearing at 530. Um, having just listened to the uh, motion and the vote, um, yeah, I don't think you need to re read it for me. Um, so then I will uh, recommend that the tree be removed, uh, that we will follow best management practices for preserving root zone and protecting the trees during construction, and that we will um, improve the number of planting locations we have uh, at that um, project site. So we will hopefully end up with more trees um, than we currently have. So can I actually add one little bit? Can you hold off on removing the tree until the project actually is starting to go? Yeah. Yes, I will wait until um, I have a firm start date um, for the project. Yeah. Thank you. Am I adding that to our statement? Sure. Right. So it is 531. I will close the tree hearing. Um, if there are no any, if there are no further questions from anybody, um, so that I can leave and close the Zoom meeting, and then we can reopen the public shade tree hearing with your, your link. Um, so there'll be a moment of time when I'm trying to get that link up and running and everyone can come back in. Yeah, well, we have the, um, we have the link, but yeah, you have to get it started, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. so I'm gonna close the, the Zoom. Good, see you on the other- um, Thanks everybody. The other meeting in 25 minutes. Any more- uh, Thanks, comments? Alan. Do you want to start in 25 minutes? You want me to start earlier? No, six o'clock. Yeah. Six o'clock. That's what we posted okay. it as. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Bye. Bye.